Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history and I love history. And if you love history too, this is the channel for you. The United States Merchant Marine has been called the Forgotten Service. It's not even really recognized as a military service. And yet in time of war, they provide critical functions in war zones taking incredible risks. During the Second World War, the Merchant Marine operated 4,200 merchant ships, which were bringing necessary supply to soldiers in all theaters of operation in the middle of combat zones, and they took exceptional risks. Their merchant vessels were lightly armed and no match for the warships, submarines, and aircraft that were trying to destroy them. In the Second World War, as many as 9,000 merchant mariners lost their lives as a result of war wounds. And by some estimates, they had the highest proportional casualty rate of all of the military services. And there is not a greater example of the risks that the merchant mariners took than the extraordinary story of what happened to the SS Stephen Hopkins. It is a story that deserves to be remembered. The SS Stephen Hopkins was one of the first Liberty ships, those are mass-produced merchant vessels that the United States made in the Second World War, to come off the line. Her keel was laid down less than a month after Pearl Harbor, and she was at sea by May of 1942. Her 2,500 horsepower engines could give her a cruising speed of 10.5 knots and an all-out speed of 12.5 knots, carrying as much as 11,000 tons of cargo. Liberty ships were lightly armed, mostly to protect them against aircraft. The Stephen Hopkins had two 37mm cannons in her bow and a larger 4-inch naval rifle in her stern. She had a crew of 41 officers and men and a naval armed guard detachment, naval reservists who were assigned to operate the guns, of 14 enlisted and one officer. She was captained by 39-year-old Paul Buck, a veteran merchant marine skipper. The Stephen Hopkins transported cargo from San Francisco to New Zealand and then to Australia and finally offloaded the last of her cargo in Cape Town, South Africa. She left Cape Town on September 19, 1942, planning to cross the Atlantic Ocean to South America. Sunday the 27th was a quiet and normal day except for a small squall that reduced visibility. Ford Stilson, the chief steward, was in his cabin creating the mess menu for the next day when he heard the unmistakable sound of a shell piercing the ship's superstructure. The Stephen Hopkins was under attack. The general alarm sounded and the crews rushed to battle station. Barely through the fog they could see two ships, the smaller of which was about their size, and was firing at them. The ship that was firing at the Stephen Hopkins was the Stier a German commerce raider, an auxiliary cruiser known only to the Allies as Raider J. Auxiliary cruisers were heavily armed converted merchant ships. They were designed to appear as a neutrally flagged merchant vessel in order to get close to Allied shipping, although that day the squall meant that there was no need for guile. The Hopkins stumbled upon the Steyr while it was being resupplied by its tender, the ship Tannenfels, which was larger but unarmed. The Stier was roughly the size of the Stephen Hopkins, but it was far better armed. It had a battery of six 5.9-inch naval guns, an additional 75mm gun, a 37mm gun, four 20mm cannons, multiple machine guns, two torpedo tubes, and two Navy float planes. Her crew of 324 naval personnel was commanded by Captain Horst Gerlach, and the Stier had already sunk three Allied merchant vessels in her current cruise, and now the Stephen Hopkins had fallen under her guns. The crew of the Stephen Hopkins ran to their guns. Although they were wildly outgunned, their guns were perfectly capable of damaging the German raider. Captain Buck steered the ship to make it as small a target as possible and to give the best arc of fire to his largest gun, the four-inch naval rifle that was on the stern. The officer in charge of the Naval Armed Guard Detachment was grievously wounded, but he continued on deck, directing fire. As members of the Armed Guard Detachment were killed, merchant mariners jumped in to man the guns, continuing to keep up fire on the German raider. Suddenly there was a large explosion amidships. A German shell had pierced the main boiler and killed the engines. Captain Buck knew that he couldn't steer the ship anymore and that there was nothing more they could do, so he blew the whistle to abandon ship. 18-year-old cadet engineer Edwin Joseph O'Hara was leaving the destroyed engine room when he heard that abandoned ship whistle. But when he got on deck, he found the four-inch naval gun unmanned, its crew dead. He had never fired the gun before, but he had seen the operation during drills and he knew what to do. 
Searching around, he found a shell in one of the ready boxes, lifted the 90-pound shell, threw it into the breach, and pulled the lanyard. The sound of the explosion nearly knocked him off his feet, but he scored a direct hit on the steer. He found four more rounds, fired four more shots, all four scored hits, before an explosion nearby killed him. On board the steer, Captain Gerlock was in shock. He had taken on what he thought was a lightly armed merchant vessel. It should have been an easy fight. But the Stephen Hopkins had scored 35 direct hits with her four-inch gun, and the steer was in ruins. Its steering gear was blown away, its engines were disabled, it was afire, and it was sinking. Reluctantly, Gerlock gave the order to scuttle the ship, put charges in the magazine, and abandon ship. They evacuated to the Tannenfels. The explosion would sink the steer an hour ahead of the stricken Stephen Hopkins. When he gave his after-action report, Gerlock insisted that he must have run into a heavily armed cruiser. In their heroic defense, taking with them the much more powerful steer, the Liberty ship SS Stephen Hopkins became the only U.S. surface ship of the Second World War to take down a German surface ship in combat. The cost was high. Only 19 members of the crew of Stephen Hopkins made it to a lifeboat, and four of the more seriously wounded ones would not survive. But 15 did survive 31 days in a lifeboat before arriving safely on the shores of Brazil. The crew of the Stephen Hopkins was given the choice to surrender or to fight, and they decided to fight, for most of them, to the death. But it wasn't an idle sacrifice. In taking down the heavily armed German commerce raider, they had saved the lives of their fellow merchant mariners who would have been its victims. Kenneth Willard, the commander of the Naval Armed Guard Detachment, who stayed at his post literally until death, was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross. Captain Buck and four other members of his crew were given the Merchant Marine Distinguished Service Award, the highest award for valor in the Merchant Marine. For Captain Buck and two of the members, that was awarded posthumously. The entire crew was given the Gallant Ship Award. But the crew of the Stephen Hopkins did not fight to get medals. They fought because they were as committed to the cause as any other member of any other services. And it is because of them and the sacrifice of the 9,000 merchant mariners who were casualties of the Second World War that their service should never be forgotten. I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. If you did enjoy it, then please go ahead and click that thumbs up button that's there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, then please write them in the comment section. I will be happy to respond. And if you'd like five minutes more of forgotten history, all you need to do is click the subscribe button, which is on your right.